Evening all. Today is a very short but beautiful recording just to help you understand about relationships and a really big focus on you being the creator of your relationships, of your life. And for some of you, you're going to laugh at me because you're going to say, Sonny, I never created all this pain. I never created this partner to cheat on me. I never created for the narcissism and the hurt. And I understand that. And one thing I've been learning from helping hundreds of clients come together and really helping them to understand more about life, understand more about who they are, as well as the experiences that I've been through and the qualifications that I have. One thing I know spiritually is that when people are challenging you, when people are coming into your life to highlight something about you, hurt you, these people are our greatest lessons. They're the ones that are there to teach us to be stronger, to value ourselves more, to have better boundaries. And it gets really difficult if we don't overcome this challenge, if we don't overcome the problems that we face. And we don't realize that they're gifts that these problems that come into our life are truly gifts for our life in order for us to grow, to become more. I had many challenges when I was younger um, with family, with loved ones, being cheated on, being in narcissistic relationships with people that are close to me. And these experiences and teachers really allowed me to become stronger, to become clear on who I am to overcome these challenges and to create a better life. And that's why these challenges do come up in life. So as I say, you're the creator of your life, you're the creator of your circumstances. I don't mean that in a negative way. I don't mean that in a way that plays down what you went through. Because I understand how tough it is to go through this journey of life and to be around the wrong people. But as we become creators of our life, it opens up space to consciously, with awareness, focus on the life that we want to create, the relationship, the love, the happiness, and start to put the right actions, thoughts, words, emotions, and energy into creating that life. Because our current position in life, our current personal reality with relationships or previous relationships are due to our thoughts, what we tolerate, the actions, the habits that we put into the relationship and the creation of it. For example, one of my clients, she always used to meet emotionally unavailable men always meeting these emotionally unavailable men. She said to me, Sonny, why is this happening to me? What is going on? <laughs> and as I got to know her more, I started to ask her personal questions about herself, about emotions, about her own vulnerability. And she was completely close to it. She would say, we don't need to go back there. We don't need to talk about that, Sonny. I've already dealt with it. And as I'll probe a bit more and I'll say, but tell me more about life, growing up, family. She would be very uncomfortable to share. And then on the outside, she's meeting emotionally unavailable people because also she wasn't available to share that vulnerability. It wasn't until we worked together for a couple of months that she started to open up more. But this client had a lot of their trust issues but as she started to open up more vulnerably, more openly about family, about loved ones, about some challenges, about family memories that she had, she started feeling more comfortable knowing that she's not going to be hurt. So she started opening up more and more. And this led to greater people coming into her life. People that were more comfortable and accepted what's happened in the past. And as she accepted and was more open to share, 
she was able to meet more emotionally available men that were there, that was understanding of it. As we put this barrier up inside of us, and this barrier looks like I don't want to open up or dive into a certain area of life because I feel that you may judge me or you may use this information to hurt me. We are creating barriers within our life and these barriers are matching with the barriers that we see with the partners that we attract. Because the barriers that we have within are matched by the barriers of the people that we meet outside. And the reflection of who she was inside is a reflection of the partner that she was meeting outside. So she started opening up more and opening that heart space, being vulnerable with me and knowing that it's safe. Knowing that it's okay to open up that nobody's going to use this information to hurt you. And ultimately, no one can hurt you. As we realise that, let's just go into that a little bit more. As we realise no one can actually hurt us. It graves a great relief internally. Because we realise that no matter what I share, no matter who I start this journey of love with, they can't truly hurt me. Because either it would be a lesson, a teaching, or they wasn't right for us. Or you was meant to be in a different relationship. But as you're clear with what you want to create in the world, the people that come in and out, they can't hurt you because you were clear with your focus and your intentions. There's something called the reticulated activator system. And that's just a big word for a antenna that's within your brain. And that antenna leads you to what you want and what you focus on. But the antenna is deeply rooted within us. And it's based on our feelings, our emotions, and the deepest thoughts, fears that we have. When that client was scared that somebody would use her information or her heart to hurt her, to not be there for her, then what happened is it led to her doubting herself and doubting herself with her partner when she's being open with them. She would be more closed off from the outside and this will make the partner that she's meeting closed off as well. The important thing to do when creating love and creating life is to be in the vibration. I know many people speak about this. I often contemplate what is it to be in the vibration? But for this woman, when she became more open with who she was, when she became more open with her stories about life, vulnerability, the beautiful life she's experienced, the challenges that she's experienced, the family that she has near her, nieces, nephews, loved ones, as she became more open, it created more of an authenticity and a beauty of this energy. And this attracted better males into her life because they felt how authentic and genuine she was. And it allowed them space to be authentic and genuine as well. This is what being in the vibration, the frequency is all about. It's about allowing yourself that space giving yourself that openness, that freedom to express who you are, to realize many people have challenges with relationships, with life, because this is life and life isn't as easy as we think it is. It's a journey. So as we go into creating relationships and creating life, it's really important for you to focus on 
what you want from the outside perception. How would this relationship be? How would they treat you? What would you do together? One of the clients that I helped come together with a partner, when they were going to get engaged, she started to get cold feet. She was wondering, is this what a relationship is? It seems a little bit boring now. <laughs> because all the adventures of the drama of chasing somebody and connecting with them and then running away and exploring a new date, all of that short-term highs that you have from a relationship, they disappear more. Because now you have more consistency, more of a secure, stable, open, loving relationship. And for her, we had to get her to fall in love with how a relationship can be. Putting up a Christmas tree together, watching movies at night, just being there as a stable partner for your relationship to grow. As we fall in love with that image of a relationship, it comes into your life a lot faster. I read this quote once and it said, God only wants to do what you want him to do. Or it, I know what you mean. And what I got from that is, if we are thinking about a painful relationship, God thinks you want to experience that, so he'll bring that to you. If we are thinking about a loving, long-term, harmonious relationship, then God will lead you into that as well, because he knows what you want. We're powerful beyond measure. We are powerful humans. And we have infinite potential. But many times we become familiar with the emotions that we currently have. If we were cheated on, if we was hurt in the past, we become so familiar with that, that we think it's going to come up again. And because of that, we are asking God, the universe, this is what I want to create. I want this to be created. Or I don't want this to be created. But remember what I said. It's what we become familiar with and also them feelings of fear that really manifest. So when I ask this woman to fall in love with how the future will be together. Because her vision was only up to dating somebody. I said, fall in love with how would it be when you're engaged? I started saying, well, Sonny, I will start planning the wedding. I'll go meet family and hand out invitations. We'll, we'll look at what we do, where we'll go for a honeymoon, how we'll spend our time together. We'll start looking at if I'm going to move in with him, are we going to get a new place? What are we going to do? I said, like, beautiful. And she started going, well, it could be exciting that I meet his in-laws. And we start to connect and build a new family together. I'll have a new mom and a new father. And then she got really excited about this new chapter, this engagement, this next part of life. And that emotion of love and joy and excitement came back to her. And she started to focus her energy on the engagement and the next steps, which led to a passion for the relationship again. And it came true. She, after she was engaged, she went and handed out wedding invitations to her family. She started connecting with family that she hadn't seen in so long and they were so happy for her to get married. She was excited about planning the wedding and talking about it. It took up all of her time, but she loved it because it was something that she was really passionate about and something she dreamt of for a long time but was too scared to go back into them dreams because of her from the past. And this is where we have to let go. To create, we have to let go of the past. We have to let go of past situations, 
past relationships. And the way we let go of them is to learn. I know it sounds simple enough, but we must learn and then we must implement that learning. Like I said, I was cheated on with my first relationship, which really taught me to value myself more. I was truly giving up my identity to please this woman. I had this needy attachment style where I needed the love from her because I didn't feel it enough when I was at home with my family. I didn't receive the love that I wanted. So I put all of that lack of love into that relationship which meant I would do anything for her. But it made it uncomfortable for her because she also wanted me to value myself the way she valued me. And after a while, my neediness made her think subconsciously, maybe this man doesn't value himself enough, which led her to cheat because I wasn't showing my value to her or the relationship. And then after that, I went into this avoidant pattern. And the avoidant pattern is one of closed off. I was closed to the world and wasn't allowing many people in. I was focusing on work and becoming the best that I can be. Health, focus, business. And having fun as well with my friends, of course. I was out and about, the life of the party. Inside I was lonely, I wasn't really letting anyone in. But the distractions of life was enough for me to think it was okay. Also, with this closed approach, it made me very attractive to many people. <laughs> they were like, whoa, look at this guy, he's very attractive. Why, why doesn't he want me? Hmm, I'm intrigued, I want more. <laughs> but it wasn't until the point that I met my wife, she was my girlfriend at the time and I had to let go of that pattern that hurt from being cheated on and this new habit that I formed so I had to let go of that and start being vulnerable start being open and start to grow that was around 10 years ago now where I started to work with Tony Robbins and started to invest in myself and we both invested to become greater to become more we learned to take accountability, learned to value ourselves. We also learned to forgive and let go of the past, which was a big one for me. I remember I came up with a new affirmation that said, all the love I need is within me now. Just take a deep breath in with me. Just take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> On this second deep breath in, I just want to ask you to think about all the love I need is within me now. Take a deep breath in. All the love you need is within you now. And breathe out. Does that feel nice? Let's do two more. Deep in through your nose. All the love you need is within you now and out for your mouth. <sighs> and one more deep breath in. Remembering all the love you need is in you now and deep breath out. <sighs> That's it. All the love you need is within you now. When you think of that, you become the magnet for love. You are the center of love because all the love you need is within you now. When we are full, we don't need to chase. We don't need to pursue the wrong relationship. Instead, we pursue the right relationship. Because when all the love you need is within you now, you could be secure within yourself to communicate openly, 
to connect with her partner openly. To know what you tolerate. If they're disrespecting you, if they're not understanding you, they're not valuing you. As you know that you're the center of love, as you know that all the love you need is already within you. You don't chase it. You don't tolerate being disrespected. Instead, you open up. You share with them openly. I don't like the way you're treating me. I don't like the way this relationship is going. Because when you're clearer with a partner, they end up valuing you more. That's because they know you know your worth. And they respect that. They respect your worth. They respect your being. They respect who you are. And that's such an important thing when creating and finding love. is for them to see you and respect you. But if you tolerate them disrespecting you. Not showing up for the relationship. Then they happily continue doing that. So when you're looking at creating your relationship, we want to create from the outside in. I know many people say the inside out. I also do agree. The inside is more important, but let's look at the outside first. Imagine it was 12 months from now. How would your relationship be together? What would you be doing together? How would they make you feel? Would you feel safe? Loved? Would they be nurturing, kind? Masculine, feminine? Would they make you feel seen and heard and appreciated for the work that you do, for the efforts that you put into the relationship? Do they give you this feeling of ecstasy, of joy, of excitement? That every day you get to spend together. Every day you get to create new beautiful memories together and a beautiful life together. Is that joy? Is it excitement? What comes up inside of you? You feel that inside from the bottom of your core. From who you are, you feel that joy, you feel that excitement. Then from there, we want to understand how are they? Are they driven? Are they ambition? Ambitious? <laughs> Do they value themselves? Are they people of growth, spiritual? I know we hear high valued a lot recently, but do they have that high value of energy? Do they have integrity, openness? I had this client once and I was getting her to describe all of this. As she was going through her vision, she goes, you know, yes, I want a male that's strong, that's amazing, that's masculine. And I can't wait to have him in my life. Can't wait for him to see me and love me and we go on these trips away. But she said, Sonny, that's not my life though. Sonny, this person doesn't happen in my world. She goes, I can't find a man like this. My cousins, they're in bad relationship. My mum's divorced. It's just not in my kismet. So I said to her, what if you can change your kismet? She said, oh no, no. Only God can do that. I said, what if you can help God to work with you and you can work with God to change your kismet? She goes, okay, I can try that. But they probably won't like me because of my caste. She goes, they won't understand me. My caste is different. They're going to judge me all the time. I said, what if there was a person that didn't judge you and was the same caste as you? Or maybe they just didn't care about caste enough. She said, no, 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 no. You don't know the people that I know. They're all judgmental. 
every time we're seeing more and more blocks coming from her. More and more limitations. And we said, what if there was one person? Do you know one person in your life that isn't judgmental? That is accepting that, is open. That doesn't care if you're a certain caste, a certain background, a certain way. She says, yeah, my best friend. He's a great male. He's such a kind guy, such a loving guy. But we're not meant to be for each other. Uh, okay, but at least you know one person. Do you think there could be more people like that? Oh, they're rare to find. <laughs> I said, well, if you really thought about it, could there be more? And she said, yeah, but none that I'll be attracted to. <laughs> was, okay, do you think in this whole big world, could there be one that you'll be attracted to? One that you can attract that won't be like that? So maybe. Like, okay, good. I was like, and if you did let go of that thought that everyone is judgmental and castist and would judge you straight away, if you let go of that, how would you date? How would you be? Sure, Sonny, I'll be more of myself. I'll be more authentic. I'll be more open. I said to her, if you were more open and this male was more open, do you think you would find them more attractive? She goes, hmm, maybe. I have to think about that. <laughs> As we carried on working with her, and we let go of some of these blocks that came up for her, she was able to go on and find better people. But her problem was, the people that she was associated with when she was growing up, was just one type of thinking. I asked her to go out there to the world and meet different people to go to different events, to connect with different people. And as she did, she started to meet people that wasn't in her normal fit. And she said this very common line, he wasn't my normal type, but just felt, let me explore it and give it a try. And that person she did explore and give a try with, she actually ended up getting married to him. And that's exactly what happens when they're not our normal type. Because our normal type is leading us to our same situation. So when we open up and we explore differently and we try differently, we give space to finding and creating a more beautiful relationship. So as we get in creating your relationship, we need to focus on who this person will be. And trusting that reticulated activated system. Trusting that there are amazing people out there in the world. That are ready to connect with you. That are ready to open a relationship up with you. To ready to start something special. We have to trust that. Now the next part of it is to understand who we must be to create this relationship. Earlier on we spoke about the vibration of love and being in the right frequency to attract the partner. So if we want a masculine partner, first thing first is we must be feminine in our nature. You must be feminine in how you show up. And to be feminine, it means that you're free flowing, that you're like a butterfly. Flying away, so free. This allows the masculine energy to open up. And in order for you to be in this feminine nature, another thing that must happen is to be open. That's open with communication, it's opening with who you are. As this again allows that masculine energy to feel free around you. And the third thing that must happen in order for this feminine nature to attract the masculine is to be supportive. 
supportive of the visions and goals and who they are. Once we start doubting the intentions and who they are, the relationship starts to go down. So it's really important for us to be open. And equally, if you're masculine and you're ready to attract a feminine woman, or you want to step into your masculine abilities, then it's important for you to be clear, be that leader that's protective, that protects your partner, that protects your beautiful relationship, your love and your partner. To allow them to be feminine and free, this is where the opposites come in. And now we're not running away from saber-toothed tigers, or we're not running away from animal attacks. But protection also means from family, people that are doubting her. You've got to be there as that strong leader to stand up for your partner, to be there for them. To not put them down, instead, raise their self-esteem in public or whenever necessary. The masculine also needs to see and appreciate their partner. Appreciate their differences. Appreciate who they are. See them for their love. See them for their kindness, see them for how they show up, different hair, different styles, whatever that is, see them for who they are. And the third thing is to be present. Present means when we're looking at our partner, we're not looking at anyone else. Presence means when you're in the room with your partner, listening to her, you're not on your phone, or checking your WhatsApp, or watching something else on TV, instead, she is the only one that matters, because that presence makes your partner feel safe, to open up, and to open her heart to love you. I see this so many times with relationships. A male client that was helping. Well put together, successful in what he does. However, the problem that came with him was he was so focused on the future. Business, work, wedding, future. He wouldn't be present with now. And as he wasn't present with now, he would make that his partner always feel uncomfortable. He will make her feel like she had to be more. She had to be in the future to be with him. But when she was trying to catch up with him, he will be even further ahead. <laughs> so presence, being in the room now, focusing on your partner and listening to them now, enjoying now. This happened so many times. People will come to me and say, Sonny, I'm ready for love. I'm ready to create a beautiful relationship and get married today. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and he goes, I don't know why I'm not creating marriage now. I'm serious about it. Why isn't it working? And this one person said to me, Sonny, Everyone tells me to stop looking for it and it will come. How do I do that? And I said to him, listen, the most important thing for you to do is to not stress too much about the future because it gives off a desperate energy and emotion to love. You've got to start enjoying now but with the intention for the future. You've got to start enjoying what you must do now to create the future. Because how do I do that? I said, as you have a strong intention about being committed and wanting a relationship to grow in the future of marriage, 
if you get stuck in the future, that person will get scared. Because they don't know, if I commit the rest of my life to you, what's the next goal? What's the next stress and worry that we're going to have to deal with? Once we get married, are we going to want kids straight away? Once we have kids, are we going to wait till they're 18? Once they're 18, do we start planning something else? What do we do? And that stress hormone will create stress within them. So I said, you need to share about the future, about what you want in a relationship. But today you need to create joy and excitement and attraction and chemistry. Why should you both have a vision for the future? Why well, you both know what you want for the future? But today and now, you must create that excitement, that joy, that love. Today and now, you must add that excitement to life so that they can feel it. And they go, yes, this is the love, this is the passion, this is the excitement that I've been looking for. This is everything that I wanted. With the travels, the joy, the family, with um, the humor, the passion and attraction. And we both want the same thing long term. That is such a critical part. And it took him a little bit of time for it to marinate within him. He started to enjoy life more. He started doing, taking up hobbies. He started to connect with friends. He started to go on hikes and do different things. And as he was enjoying life and putting himself out there at these events and meeting people, he gave off a different energy because he started to love life. And he realized, all the love I need is within me now. That it wasn't that he was desperate and looking for love. Instead, he was a creator of love. He was in the vibration of love because he was loving life. He was loving each of the moments of life. And as he brought that into a relationship, and somebody that he met, they felt that high energy. And he felt, this is how I want life to be. And this is how he became the source of love, the magnet. And at that point there, he was able to meet incredible people. And he stopped coming to the events, I'm sure. <laughs> He's in a beautiful relationship now. So to create love to create that beautiful relationship we must find things that we love we must do things that we love in life going for walks in nature hiking doing yoga doing different activities that really get us into that beautiful state then we must realize that we are the creators of love that means in every conversation in every situation we can create love giving compliments getting to know them, giving our presence, understanding them. Creating stories and sharing stories about your life. Creating stories about the future, fun things. Getting to know their life. Connecting, eye contact, being open. These simple but powerful habits can help us become the creator of love in our life. Because every interaction we have, we start creating love with others. And what we reap, we reap what we sow. <laughs> so what we sow to give love to others is what we reap in return. What we sow into the world is what we reap in return. So that as you sow, and with each sowing action, you are giving love to others. It's the love that you would receive back. And this is what puts you in that frequency of love, of joy. So to create this loving relationship, we must first understand 
how to create it with others. We must be the being of love. Remember, all the love I need is within me now. We must manipulate energy. What does that mean to manipulate energy? It means to be able to transmute, which is a big word for transfer some of the negative emotions that we've had with previous relationships in the past. We must let go of some of the hurts that have come up in the past for us and be able to open up, forgive, appreciate the lessons, the people that came into our life, any hurt that we're holding on to, be able to be grateful for who we become because of that situation. We must be able to let go of anything that's holding us back. And in order for us to let go, we must first become aware. Become aware of any hurt that was passed down to us through our generations, through our parents, through our upbringing, past relationships. Be able to understand it, let it go and thank it. To thank it, we must become aware of how this helped us. How it helped us grow, how it helped us to become more. And with this energy to thank, to appreciate, to love, to forgive. We open up space to be able to create. Because I see it as, imagine you're driving a car. And you have two flat wheels, and that's a generational hurt. One is from parents that are passed down. The other one's from previous relationships that are equaled hurt. And you're driving, and you're trying to go full speed ahead. You're putting your whole effort and energy into it. But you're going so slow, and it's skidding out all the time. And what's straight ahead is that beautiful relationship that you want to create. But your tires are flat and now it's becoming so difficult to be able to create this beautiful relationship. And also so tiring because there's so much energy and effort that you're putting out there. However, it's not coming back to you. And it's very hard for you to get there. It's feeling burnt out. The tires are destroyed so much noise in the car because of the damage of the bare wheel tires that you think how am I ever going to get to this destination and when I get to this love I'm going to be so tired instead we want to replace our rear with bare wheel tires and we want to fill them up again with love Fill them up with gratitude. Fill them up with appreciation for life and the experiences. We want to replace any damage by forgiving and letting it go. We want to be thankful for the growth that you had through these experiences to become stronger, to become more. And this is how we release negative karma. Now we have fresh tires on the car. Filled with joy, filled with love. Now going straight ahead to our destination becomes effortless. That it becomes a journey of joy and excitement and love. That actually when you pick up your partner and you're on the journey that you continue going ahead because life becomes a high vibrancy and frequency for you to create more and do more, for you to transform, for you to focus on what you want, for you to become so much more, to create the beautiful house, to create the beautiful family, to go on these beautiful travels, 
to bring in more love into your life in different areas, to bring in more joy into your life, knowing all the love you need is within you now, creating this harmonious, beautiful relationship where you understand each other, you connect with each other, you want to grow together. You understand there might be obstacles in the way, but together you get through it. This is how we begin to create the beautiful life and relationship that you want. So continue creating, continue to create and remember, it's not just you. We have our power of our subconscious mind. These antennas are also going to help you. All you need to do is focus on what you want. and Put that right energy into it. Let go of the past. I know it sounds simple. But it's a process. And the more you open up to this process, the more you believe, trust, and focus on what you want. Different insights will come up for you to let go of, people to forgive. Different tests will come up for you to ensure that you're capable to make it. But I trust that your journey is going to be beautiful. I trust that your journey is going to be kind to you. And it starts with you being kinder to yourself. Continue creating, continue focusing. And I look forward to helping you find love and being on this journey with you. Remember you're the creator of your love life, the creator of your relationships and life. I love you, thank you.